an important first step in learning how to make realistic shading in a drawing with pencil and chalk is to figure out what your materials are capable of doing. And in the Vitruvian Studio lessons on shading and light and shadow, the first thing you do is you make a scale of values going from 1 all the way up to 10, and you use your different pencil leads, the hardness and softness of the lead, and test it out and basically figure out, okay, what's the very darkest dark I can make with the pencils that I have available? Okay, and now let's step it down and see if I can make something that's a little bit lighter shade, and what pencils do I need to use to create that lighter shade? And you just keep moving up through the value scale until you get to something that's lighter than the shade of the paper that you're drawing on, and then you move to your chalk and figure out, okay, how do I make something that's just barely lighter than the paper? And then how do I make something that's even brighter than that? And then what's the very brightest that I can achieve with my chalk pencil? Now, on this value scale that I've done, been working on here, it's clear that I had some trouble in the middle areas because that's really tricky. The next exercise is all about those sort of middle values. You have example squares above, and you try to recreate the difference in shading between the two squares. Now, you're not trying to exactly reproduce the value because maybe you can't. Maybe the printed out square that you have is too dark or too light and you just can't get that dark or you can't get that light with your pencil, but you want to try and recreate that difference between the shades. And really this is a process of over and over again trying out the different pencil leads and just getting an intuitive feel for, okay, a 6B is going to produce this level of blackness and if I go over it twice and use the blending stump then it's going to make it this much darker. And as you work down through these examples, at least for me, I, I found that I was getting a more intuitive sense for how many times I was going to need to pass over the square with the different materials and which leads I should choose. Now, I still have a long way to go to building up my intuitive sense for which chalks and which leads are going to be appropriate in which situations, but I think I definitely was getting more of a hang of it as I just repeated this process over and over. The next set of exercises were all done on one piece of paper, and these 12 exercises took me about two weeks to complete. I had these printed out strips of example shading practice, and I would tape that example strip next to a strip of blank paper and just try to reproduce that transition shading as accurately as possible. And each one of these strips took me between 30 to 45 minutes to complete. And the goal is to try and make the transitions as smooth and uniform and even as possible. The printed out version you can see is very smooth and very even, and so trying to do that with a pencil just using your hand, it's pretty tough, and uh, these first few, I clearly struggled with it. I have big chunks where you can see the transition from light to dark is very clunky and not smooth at all, <laughs> and over time, I found that the key really was patience here. You really have to take your time and go back and forth between what you're putting on the paper and the example strip and examine each little transition very carefully and build up the transitions very gradually, one layer on top of another. Also, like I mentioned before, this was another chance to build up familiarity with the pencils and the chalk that you have and what sort of an effect it's going to produce on the paper that you have. So as I move through these, I think I got better at knowing where to start. You can see that I always started with a strip along the side, just a narrow strip to try and get a sense of the progression of the pencils. And once I felt like that strip was a decent match, then I would carry it all the way across the whole section that I had set apart for each of these example strips. And over time, I was learning to be patient and to just really 
get into the uh, sort of zen-like state that you have to have to focus on this type of uh, abstract shading with no real object in mind and to just enjoy the process. You can get into a little bit of a flow state here, I feel like. I, I'm never sure exactly what people mean when they say they're in a flow state, but yeah, the time definitely seems to go by quicker than I would have expected. 30 to 45 minutes on each of these actually didn't feel that long once you get really engrossed in trying to match these transitions and trying to get the shading just right. Sometimes I would have to go back and forth over the dark sections again and again to darken them or to erase little spots where I had gone too dark. And then with the chalk as well. Now with the lead pencils, you've got all kinds of different hardnesses of lead and different blackness levels. But with the chalk, you just have chalk. And so it's all a variation of how much chalk you lay down. So this whole thing was quite an experience. I hope that you find it useful. If you have thoughts about it or suggestions about how I could do it better, I'd love to hear from you. Take care.